good morning dear students let us start with the next two types of polygons that is convex and concave already we have discussed about what are basically curves different types of curves again simple curve closed curve open curve we have seen already what are polygons why polygons are known as simple closed curve and why they are only made up of line segments we have discussed about diagonals we have discussed about interior and exterior we have discussed about regular and irregular polygon today we will be discussing about the next important topic that is convex and concave convex and concave already i think if you are very thorough with science you have in science you already know about convex and concave mirror i think you know about what do you mean by convex convex means plane convex means plane there is no bulge out but in concave it is inward if any portion is inward it is called concave i'll discuss what it means so do remember what do you mean by convex convex polygons are polygons in which the measure of each of the interior angle is less than 180 degree very very important if we are talking about a quadrilateral a quadrilateral will be having four interior angle each interior angle must be less than 180 degree must be less than 180 degree means this is 180 straight line is 180 it must be less than 180 degree or 180 degree basically if any angle will be 180 that's impossible basically one line complete makes an angle 180 so definitely each angle would be less than 180 clear now next important thing is they have no portion of their diagonals in their exteriors means if we draw the diagonals diagonals must not be exterior to the polygon we'll discuss this next come to concave concave means inward do remember i'm writing the word inward do remember like this concave a polygon in which at least one of the interior angle is greater than 180 one of at least one of it can be two it can be three but at least one of the angle must be greater than 180 then that particular polygon is known as concave definitely diagonal exists exterior of the polygon now let's see the example with the help of some figures so if i'm going to draw a quadrilateral it's a concave it's a concave understand why a b c d why each interior angle is definitely less than 180 degree secondly if i am going to draw any diagonal diagonal do exist inside the polygon that is why it is known as convex polygon so there is no portion of the diagonals in their exterior so even if you draw a pentagon again pentagon is a brilliant example of what convex if you see all the angles all the interior angles are less than 180 degree if you draw any of the diagonals if you draw any of the diagonals any of the diagonals if you draw any of the diagonals all the diagonals are integer that is why they are convex are we clear there is no portion of their diagonals in their exteriors okay next concave polygon angle one of the angle must be greater than 180 degree one of the angle must be greater than 180 i'll give an example for example it's a quadrilateral because four sided figure not a problem four angles are there it's a four sided figure if you clearly see this angle this angle and this angle angle a angle b angle d they are less than 180 but if you clearly observe this angle this angle is definitely what obtuse angle means obtuse even i would say it is greater not even obtuse it is greater than 180 because obtuse mean 90 to 180 all these are obtuse but this is not obtuse it can be reflex so angle c here is a reflex angle can you observe why i told you if you remember in class 7 i gave a shortcut of angles if you remember acute remember 
90 degree remember obtuse remember then straight means 180 degree if you observe this this particular angle outside is acting like this so if it is acute definitely angle outside it would be obtuse same thing if this is outside acute definitely this is obtuse are we clear if this outside angle is acute this angle is definitely greater than 180 are we clear therefore if you one thing is for sure this angle is reflex angle clear next if a and d are non consecutive vertices if i join them it will be called what diagonal diagonal is outside diagonal is exterior to the polygon hence concave are we clear so first condition is if you see this shape any angle inward this is inward any angle inside or inward definitely it is concave secondly if you join non consecutive vertices you will be getting diagonal if diagonal is outside the figure definitely it is concave polygon are we clear any doubt anyone is having with convex and concave very very important topic to understand do remember each angle needs to be less than 180 diagonal interior at least one of the angle greater than 180 and diagonal must be exterior any doubt anyone is having with this next we discussed about regular polygon do you remember one condition was in regular polygon all the sides are equal all the angles are equal therefore they are known as equilateral and equiangular these are two important words that you will going to hear in this chapter throughout equilateral means all sides equal equiangular means all angles equal these are the two important terms that we are going to hear throughout the chapter equilateral and equiangular are we clear very very important next thing we discussed about diagonal can you tell me one important property of a diagonal that why diagonals are known as for what diagonals are known for diagonals are known for the longest side in the figure do remember diagonals are the longest side in the figure because you are simply joining to opposite means to non consecutive vertices that is why they are known as the longest side in the given polygon or in the given figure so do remember this two important properties next is important property i discussed yesterday with you exterior and interior angle today we will learn a formula where how can you find each exterior angle or how can you find the sum of all the exterior angles so important topic what is the formula for sum of all the interior angles In short, I hope you know what do you mean by sum of all the interior angle property that is also known as angle sum property. Do remember. So, how to find sum of all the interior angles, sum of all the interior angles of any polygon is equal to the formula is n minus 2 multiplied with 180 degree. This is the formula for angle sum property of any polygon. Simply put the value of n and you will come to know what is the angle sum property of any polygon. For example, for example, if I am talking about a triangle, triangle is having three sides, therefore n is equal to 3 n minus 2 n my 3 minus 2 into 180 degree 1 into 80, 180 degree therefore 180 degree don't you know the angle sum property of a triangle is 180 degree if we add all the three angles of a triangle we'll be getting 180 let's see for quadrilaterals we are having four sides 
therefore n is equal to 4 4 minus 2 into 180 that is 2 into 180 360 degree sum of all the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 it cannot be more than 360 similarly let's say, say for pentagon n is equal to 5 5 minus 2 into 180 that is 3 into 180 that is 540 degree and so on by this you can find the sum of any any polygon all the interior angles are we clear very easy n minus 2 into 180 degree where n is the number of sides of a given polygon. Are we clear? Now, you might be thinking, so what if we have to find each exterior angle? What we have to do? Simply, for each exterior angle, we normally take the case of regular polygon. For regular polygon, definitely each exterior angle measure would be same. So what is the formula? For that simple formula is measure of each interior angle is equal to n minus 2 into 180 degree divided by n divided by n. Now take an example of for example equilateral triangle. When we talk about equilateral triangle each measure is 60 degree and when we talk about square each measure of angle is 90 degree let us see now 3 minus 2 into 180 degree upon 3 so 1 into 180 degree upon 3 if we cancel we get 60 degree therefore measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon if we are talking about equilateral triangle then that's 60 degree when we talk about square 4 minus 2 into 180 degree upon 3 upon 4 not 3 4 that's 2 into 180 degree upon 4 cancel out cancel out 90 degree hence verify so this is the formula to find the measure of each interior angle of any polygon this is a triangle to find the sum of all the interior angle simply if you divide by side you will be getting the measure of each unitary method sum of all you have to find from one what will you do you will divide by numbers so number of sides simply unitary method are we clear with the interior portion are we clear with the interior portion let's see the exterior now let's see the exterior sum of all the exterior angle of a polygon simply simply just see let me draw any polygon for example let me draw a triangle if you talk about exterior angle this is exterior angle this is exterior angle and of course this is exterior angle if we talk about it right angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 they are interior definitely let me make it a bit like this exterior angle Exterior angle, exterior angle, exterior angle, clear. If I talk about, let me say this is angle 4, exterior angle, this is angle 5, exterior angle, this is angle 6, exterior angle. If we have to find the sum of exterior angle, it means we have to find angle 4 plus angle 5 plus angle 6 in this. Do remember, sum of exterior angles of any polygon. Do remember, it's a shortcut. Sum of all the interior angles, sum of all the exterior angles of any polygon is always 
360 degree is always 360 degree do remember why because if you see any figure we have to move complete we have to take one complete round it means we are if we are taking complete circle it means we are making complete angle complete angle means 360 degree that is why the sum of all the exterior angles of any polygon is always 360 degree let it be any polygon if you'll see even if you'll see equilateral triangle square quadrilateral pentagon any i'm talking of regular do remember i'm talking about the regular thing here regular or irregular sum of all the exterior angles of a polygon is absolutely 360 degree but in case of interior the formula which i have given you that is for only regular polygon that is i have written the word regular polygon not for irregular because for irregular the each angle will change do remember you can use this formula for regular irregular but once i give you the formula for regular or irregular in variation to each then the things will change do remember so do remember sum of all the exterior angle of a polygon is 360 uh, 360 degree let me prove for example let me assume that this is an equilateral triangle definitely if this is an equilateral triangle each interior angle would be 60 degree of course 60 degree of course 60 degree now if i talk about let me make this a straight line so that i can get a proper answer yeah clear now you know that this is called linear pair do you remember linear pair two adjacent angles on a straight line form linear pair and two linear pair means 180 if this is 60 this is definitely 120 any doubt linear pair similarly if this is 60 this is also 120 similarly if this is 60 this is also 120 linear pair lp linear pair lp linear pair if i put the value of angle 4 is 120 degree angle 5 is 120 degree angle 6 is 120 degree 120 120 120 360 degree lhs equal to rhs hence verified also i proved i verified in front of you that i am correct with my statement that sum of all the exterior angles of any polygon is always 360 degree this is short term you need not to question on this because it's well verified that when we are talking about exterior angle we are moving outside complete angle we are making when we make a complete angle complete angle means 360 degree clear next for a regular polygon for a regular polygon i'm on i'm only talking about the regular now for a regular polygon measure of each exterior angle is equal to let's see 360 degree upon number of sides this is what we need if you see for equilateral triangle 360 degree upon 3 you'll be getting 120 degree hence very far for square you'll be getting 360 degree upon 4 that's 90 degree and you know that each interior angle also and each exterior angle of a square would be 90 degree a square in front of you a square in front of you 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree if we draw exterior angles clearly see what is happening 90 plus 90 180 linear pair 90 plus 90 again linear pair 90 plus 90 again linear pair 90 plus 90 again linear pair 90 plus 90 180 180 plus 90 270 270 plus 90 360 hence verified 
Are we clear? Again, because complete circle we have made, complete angle we have made. Clear with this? So, how to use this formula? It's very, very important. You need to be very quick. You need to be very smart. You need to be very thorough and effective while using this formula. Clear with this? Again, we'll do one very important angle sum property of a quadrilateral. Because we are talking about quadrilaterals, so we need to prove angle sum property. Though I have given you the formula, you already know that sum of all the angles of a quadrilateral will be 360 degree. But we have to prove. So we'll prove our theorem. First theorem of your chapter. First theorem of your chapter. The sum of all the angles of a coordinator is 360 degree. We have to prove this. So, solution first. So, we too, we have to prove. Let me draw the figure first. For your benefit, let me draw any given quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. For example, I have drawn here, you, I'll, you, this is trapezium. This is trapezium that you will see. And let me join one of the diagonal with it. After joining the diagonals, let me name its angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, angle 6. What happened here is, this particular angle, angle C is divided into two parts, 3 and 4, and angle A is divided into two angles, angle 1 and 6, just because of diagonals. You'll see the property of diagonals in upcoming classes, when I will discuss about this in detail. Do remember, I'm highlighting this, I'm highlighting this, angle 1, angle 6, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, do remember. So it is bisection here, because diagonals do bisect the angles when we talk about. Let's start. So we have to prove that angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D is 360 degree. This is what we have to prove. Sum of all the four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degree. Now, construction, because we have done one construction. Construction, join A to C so that AC is our diagonal. Are we clear? Solution. What we will do in the solution, we will make use of triangles. I hope you know that in class 7 also I discussed with you that a diagonal, if you see a quadrilateral, when two triangles are joined together, we get our quadrilaterals. So, what happened? Here this diagonal is what dividing a given quadrilateral into two triangles, first and second triangle. So, what we will do? We will use the angle sum property in the given triangle. So, we will consider first in triangle ADC. So, ADC, can I say angle 1, angle 2, Angle 3 is equal to 180 degree. Sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. I'll put it as first equation. It's a linear equation because angles are linear here. Clear? Next, in triangle, next triangle is ABC. What we will do? Angle 4 plus angle 5 plus angle 6 is 180 degree sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degree equation 4, 5, 6 again a triangle sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. now what we will do we will add first and second equations we will add first and second equations how we will add left hand side to the left hand side Right hand side to the right hand side. So left hand side angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degree plus 180 degree. Now we will shuffle. We know that 
angle 1 and angle 6 are together, angle 3 and angle 4 are together. So we can write angle 1 plus angle 6, angle 2 as it is, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5 as it is. 180 plus 180 is 360. Clear? Now, if you see clearly, we have merged angle 1 and angle 2 because they are together, angle 3. Now, if you see, if we add angle 1 and angle C, what will be getting? We'll be getting complete angle A. So, this angle 1 and angle 6 will give us angle A. Any doubt? Angle 2 as it is, that's angle D. Angle 3 and angle 4 as it is, if we'll add them, we'll be getting angle 6. Angle 5 as it is, that is angle B is equal to 360. If we rearrange, angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D is 360 degree. Hence, proof. Clear? Hence, proof. Very easy to prove. What we did, we made use of angle sum property of a triangle. First we applied in ADC, then we applied in triangle ABC. Adding them, how we will add? Our LHS to the LHS, RHS to the RHS. Angle 1, 2, 3, angle 1, 2, 3. Angle 4, 5, 6, angle 4, 5, 6. 180 plus 180, 360 degrees. Since angle 1 and 6 are together, angle 3 and 4 are together, we added them. If I add angle 1 and angle 6, what I will be getting? Complete angle A. Complete angle A. 2 as it is, angle D. Angle 3 and 4, if we we'll add, we will be getting angle C, angle C. Angle 5 as it is, angle D. We rearrange and hence we get the angle sum property of a triangle. Are we clear with this concept? So based on this concepts we have to do exercise 3.1 and exercise 3.2 that we will do in next given video. Okay, till then take care and have a wonderful day.